Well, welcome. I can see you joining the room. So welcome to this session on um, representatives. And I've got my very special guest here with me, Floor, who I'll introduce um, imminently when, when more people have joined. But welcome. Um, I hope you have sun wherever you are. It's been pretty depressing here for the last few days. But look, look at that sunshine. Yes. So I'm very excited about that. And um, so we're going to be running for about an hour today and Floor is going to be explaining how he can help you with the issue of putting representatives into place. Now, hopefully you'll have been on my last training, uh, which told you all about the position of how Brexit has affected uh, data protection. So hopefully you're well up to speed with that. If you haven't seen that, then if you're a member of my legal academy or you have a current subscription to the GDPR module, you can go into the membership site and access that recording and bring yourself up to speed with that. And I'm sure we'll go over a little bit of that ground as well. Um, but um, really today, the focus is very much on representatives, um, why you need them, well, if you need them, why you need them, um, how you go about putting in place a representative, how much they cost, what, what you can expect as part of that service, etc. And this is for anybody who is selling business or goods, and that includes digital services, any, any kinds of goods or services into the EU. Um, or, well, indeed, if you have EU people on your list or EU customers. Um, and... Um, for those of you if, you, if you're on this webinar and you've got an entirely UK customer base and audience, then you can sign off now and go and sit in the sun um, because this probably isn't relevant to you. But certainly if you have really you know, people in the EU that you're targeting, EU customers, lots of EU people on your database, then this is for you. And also just a quick point is that this works the other way around as well. So if you're in the EU and you're um, selling into the UK, then everything that we say today applies to that relationship as well. So that people in the EU will need to appoint a UK representative. Okay, so just um, bear that in mind if, um, I know we have a few, few people who'll be attending from the EU. Okay, so, um, oh, you've all found the chat box, well done. And it's sunny, seems to be sunny in lots of places. That's fantastic. Uh, does this webinar apply to US-based companies or only UK-based companies. Uh, yeah, so it applies to anybody established outside of the EU if you are selling into the EU, okay? So yes, it absolutely applies to US-based companies if you have a big list of people in the EU, if you've got a good customer base in the EU. When I say a big list, if you've got more than a couple of people in the EU on your email list, or you've got a couple, a few more, if you've only got a few customers in the EU, then maybe it's not relevant. But certainly if you've got, you know, good percentage of customers in the EU, then this is relevant to you. Okay, so without further ado, let me introduce Floor. In fact, I'm going to let you do that, Floor, because you can probably um, explain who you are and what you do much more articulately than I can. But I've known Floor now for about, oh, I think probably when GDPR was coming into force, so probably um, probably yeah. back in sort of May May 2018 time when it came into force, and then we've met up at conferences. In fact, we were just reminiscing, weren't we, Floor, and saying that the last time we met in person was at the QE2 Centre, the day before we were there, both there speaking at uh, Data Protection World Forum, and literally I read about it a couple of days later, that the, the conference that was there the day after ours is where there was a huge corona, well, I don't know if it's a huge coronavirus outbreak, but certainly they tracked that um, yeah. to the cases in China. And there'd been an outbreak um, in the QE2 centre the day after we were there. So I was very relieved that we were there the day before and not the day after. Yeah, uh, but that seems like almost a lifetime ago now, doesn't it, Floor? It, it seems like an eternity. I, I, it's kind of like the whole world is kind of BC and 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 uh, you know the before COVID and after COVID. It's 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 just incredible to think how the world has changed so no. extraordinarily in um, not even twelve months. It's, it's no, just, it's crazy. Suzanne, it is so wonderful to be on here today with you. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you to your wonderful audience here. Really excited about this. I mean, yes, we I did first become aware of you back when you did 
a hundred videos in a hundred days, I think. Uh, 90, the, 90 videos in 90, 90 days, 90 yes, videos. yes. And, and that extraordinary achievement. Uh, when I met you back in February, I was the proud recipient of the GDPR for Dummies, a signed copy, one of my prized possessions here, <laughs> recommended very, very highly. Um, uh, I, my name is, is, is Flora McCarthy. I'm a solicitor based here in, in, in the Republic of Ireland. Uh, I'm based in, in the Southwest Republic of Ireland in Cork. And I'm, I, I specialize in, in GDPR. I'm a member of the Council of the Law Society of Ireland here, and I'm also a member of their uh, uh, Data Protection Committee here. So work at a reasonably high level within the profession in, in data protection matters. Um, I've established a separate business, a separate company, to provide Article 27 representation services here in the EU for non-EU businesses. And we also uh, actually have a subsidiary working in the UK, providing UK GDPR representation as well. So we provide both of those for anybody who's outside either of the EU or the UK. And absolutely delighted to be here to speak uh, with you and your audience today, Suzanne, and, and really looking forward to it. Fantastic. Thank you, Flo. And it's a pleasure to have you here. And um, please do use the Q&A box for any questions that you have. I'm keeping half an eye on the, um, the chat box, but please do use the Q&A um, box, which is at the bottom of the screen, and we'll make sure that we get to any questions that you have. Um, and I can see some questions already. So we'll, we will, we'll get started and then look at the questions later. So if you've already asked a question in the chat and you want to make sure it gets answered, please do copy it over into the Q&A box um, and we'll look at those later. So um, let's kick off floor with um, just some background on this for maybe just a very high level overview for people yeah. who might have missed the last session that I did on this. So well, what's, what's the issue about representatives? Okay, I mean, this is, in a way, it's, it's almost like the kind of hidden or secret kind of requirement of the GDPR. It's, 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 it's really quite, has been very, very little known about, I think, up until, up until now. Um, um, it's been there since since GDPR was introduced. It's one of the it's 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 the same as any other GDPR requirement. It's it's contained in Article 27 of the GDPR, and essentially, I mean, I suppose the background to this is that the GDPR has international effect. It has extraterritorial effect. It applies to it basically anybody who's in the EU, a data subject, somebody who uh, you know, if you are, are a business owner and you hold data in your business on behalf of a person, they're a data subject. And if, if that data subject is in the EU, they have the protection and rights of the GDPR, no matter where you as the business owner happen to be located. Okay, so, so GDPR is international in that sense. And, um, and if you are a business that isn't established in the EU, but you hold data on people that are in the EU in your business and you're processing data on people that are in the EU, then unless you actually have an establishment in the EU yourself, you have to, under Article 27 of the GDPR, appoint a representative in the EU. Now, there are some exemptions to that. If the processing that you are engaged in is purely occasional, you know, it's not something that you're doing on, a, on an organized basis uh, or, 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 you know, are there certain other, you know, I think, um, you know, sort of uh, uh, public bodies and so on, it doesn't apply to, but 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 uh, unless your, your processing is occasional um, or one of the other exemptions will apply to you, which are quite, quite, quite um, uh, specific, uh, then you, if you're processing data, people in the EU, but don't have an establishment in the EU yourself, you must appoint a representative in the EU for your business. Let me stop you there, um, Floor, because I'm sure people are thinking, well, what, what's an establishment? So... <laughs> An establishment is um, is having. Well, let, me just, let me just start by saying, actually, there's no definition of establishment within the GDPR, which isn't that helpful. However, Recital 22 suggests that it implies the effective and real exercise of activity through stable arrangements. The legal form of such arrangements, whether through a branch or a subsidiary with a legal personality, is not the determining factor in that respect. So what that means is that if an entity is merely incorporated in a territory, so you've got a company incorporated in, in the UK, for example, or you've got say a single server in that territory, it wouldn't necessarily be established in that territory, okay? So even if you've got a company that's established there, it doesn't mean that you've necessarily got an establishment because there has to be this effective and real exercise of activity through stable arrangements, okay? So if you have any presence in an EU member state, 
whether it's a single representative, such as an employee or an agent, then you need to think about this really carefully as to whether you do have an establishment and it might be something that you need to take legal advice on. Okay, so- Yes, I, I would certainly say, it, I, I would strongly recommend because the, the whole concept of establishment, you know, brings in a whole lot of much wider considerations than just GDPR. I mean, you're becoming established, there's taxation implications, there will be revenue implications, there will be, you know, an establishment would usually involve people and and and, and employment and 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 so on. So, an establishment has a lot more. It's not just a, a PO box or or, or 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 a virtual office or something like that can 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 give rise to an establishment. It it really needs a. So, much if you're more. thinking that you can get around these rules on having to appoint a representative in the EU by setting up a PO box or even incorporating an office there, it's that's not going to help you is what we're saying okay there has to be this this real hang on i've lost my place now this real and effective exercise re effective and real exercise of activity through stable arrangements okay just want to underline that point because i'm sure people will be thinking oh i can do a sneaky sneaky set up a PO, sure, PO I, I, box I, here and, and we can get around these obligations and, I, and it's not that simple you know I, i've got a cousin who's in who's in who's in the casa del sol <laughs> And he'll do it, you know. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not that type of party, really. Um, but I suppose first of all, maybe it might be worth looking at because I know a lot of your businesses, maybe UK or international businesses. And the question is then, do you need to appoint a representative? You know, you know, if you've been, let's say, in the UK and you've been, because of course the, 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 the UK is a particular market because you know your guys and your people in the UK will be very, very aware of GDPR. You've been GDPR, you know engaged since GDPR was introduced uh, in, in 2018 and now on the UK's departure from the, the, the EU, you now have the UK GDPR, which is effectively the same thing. So so, so where, where, where do people in the UK sit, I suppose, would be maybe a helpful thing to start. Because I know you mentioned this on the last call and I, and I thought it was a very interesting take on it. I mean, if your business deals exclusively with UK contacts and you don't, I mean, the, the way to avoid this, if you don't want to have to appoint a representative, and I say this as somebody who does this, right? The way to avoid it is to say, look, I, I'm not going to process any data of people in the EU. I mean, once 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 you do that, you're 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 clear. You don't have to appoint a representative if you're not processing data of people in the EU. The question really is if you do have EU-based data subjects, and that doesn't mean that they're EU citizens or EU residents, if they're let's say UK expats who happen to be living in Spain or, 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 or France or wherever, then they're in the EU, they're subject to the GDPR and they have the rights uh, of all, um, of everybody in the EU under, under EU GDPR. Then if you're processing data on behalf of people like that on a regular basis, it-, it you And just know, one, and, one point actually is that yeah. what Brexit has meant is, so there are EU rules about um, not being able to geo-block countries okay but with brexit that now doesn't apply so actually we don't need to follow eu geo blocking regulation rules um when when selling um goods and services um in the uk um so i'll, I'll actually put a little note on that in um in my membership area because i think that's probably um that's a very important feature i think for for businesses who might feel that it's just not worth the additional um you know, administration and expense of, of you know, for some businesses, they will say, look, you know, the EU is a very important part of my business and I'm going to continue. I'm going to have to continue doing that. But for others, they might decide. I know I know you mentioned somebody last on your last webinar who had decided, look, I, I don't target the EU on a kind of a regular basis. Therefore, I've taken a position. I'm not going to be required to point a representative. I'm not sure that that's, you know, I wouldn't be giving advice on that, but that was a position that somebody took and it's a commercial position to, to, to have taken. Yes. Um, but I suppose the, the point is, if you decide quite clearly you're not going to process data on anybody in the EU, that certainly would avoid the requirement. Yes. The requirement arises well, I was really just to pick up on that, for those of you that might not have been on my last webinar, um, I was reading out a blog post from um, a data protection expert who'd taken the view that because he didn't target people in the EU, um, because he, you know, he might have had maybe, I don't know the percentage, but he had a small percentage of people on his list um, from the EU who just stumbled across him, but he was not actively targeting um, the EU. He certainly didn't sell in any, any um, you know, didn't sell in euros. Um, he, he was only sold in, selling in pounds. His events were all being run in the UK, et cetera. He, very, he took the view that he did not need to comply with this legislation about appointing representatives. And I said, you know, you might 
take the same view. So if you have a couple of people from the EU on your list, you might take the view that you do not need to appoint a representative and comply with this particular legislation. Now, obviously, if you are targeting people in the, in the EU or you have a significant percentage on your list, then this very much applies to you. I suppose the, the only difference, are, are, are the only, I suppose, there's caveat I would put to that, Suzanne, is that the, the, the GDPR is defined not by reference to targeting, but by reference to processing. And so, so, so the critical, you know, test is, are you processing the data of people in the EU? And if you are, and processing, as you know, is a very, very extensive definition of, 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 of I mean, I, I don't think there's anything you can really do with data in, a, in, a, in an electronic system that isn't processing it. Um, if you're processing the data, otherwise than on an occasional basis, then 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 um, the requirement um, will will apply. Yeah, no, indeed, and I, I've said a lot more on Tim's piece, um, the, the guy's piece that I'm referring to on the last session. So if you're interested in more detail in that, then do refer back to that last session. Okay, so um, so the question of um, you know, do you uh, are you likely to need a representative is one that. Um, you know, you might even need to take legal advice on if you're if you're a bit. Uh, obviously, there'll be some people who you know this absolutely clearly applies to you, in which case um, you should comply. It's the law, um, and I'm sure there will be. And in fact, I'm going to do a webinar on this floor because I've just seen. I've had an, a letter emailed to me from an, a, a member of you know a member of the public who has taken issue with somebody using a Facebook pixel without. Um, cookie consent and they're basically saying unless you pay me 450 pounds um, for this unauthorized use of cookies when I've hit your website I'm going to be reporting you to the authorities and might bring a civil claim so I mean, I'm sure that, that more of this will be popping up mm. and this is the same with representatives you know I'm sure there will be people that will be using this as a reason to get in touch and say you've not complied with the law and you've not appointed a representative, if you don't pay me this amount of money, then I'll be going and reporting it to the authorities. And then businesses won't know what to do. You know, and in many cases, they will, they will pay up. So I think it's, it's essential for you to know in your own mind whether you legally need to have one or not, and then take a view as to, you know, whether, um, you know, how, how you're going to satisfy that legal obligation. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I suppose the, the thing about it is that, um, uh, I mean, most of the GDPR, as we know, is, is on the accountability kind of principle. And, and, and a lot of the GDPR compliance that we will be engaged in in our businesses will often be internal and kind of, you know, invisible to the outside world. Um, the one thing about the representative function is that if it applies to you, it's something that you will have on your, your privacy notice um, displayed on your website. So it's, it's a very visible external kind of indicator as to whether or not you've complied exactly. um and it, it's, it's a kind of like a telltale sign very often um uh, in terms of whether a business is compliant um so it's just some and i mean and there there is that that that, that exploitative use of the gdpr is unfortunately you know there it, it happens and not that i uh, business owners should should be you know if you're like giving into that kind of uh, uh, um, um you know blackmail if you like but um um, but it is a risk. It, it's, it's a business risk like any other and, and one that you just have to take seriously. Yeah, no, indeed. So let's, um, do you want to say any more about that floor? Should we move on to, I'm sure there's people on the call who are thinking, well, what is a representative? Yeah. You know, yeah. So should yeah. we move on to that and just give a good overview yeah. of what a representative so, actually is? Yeah, the starting point was, where does it come from? What's the reason for it? And, 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 and when does it apply to you? Or how can you, let's say, avoid its compliance? And I think, are its requirement? And we've, we've spoken about that. So let's say you say, fine, I, I, I am outside the EU now, I'm based in, let's say the UK, for instance, and it would apply, there's people on the call here from the US who have the same question, would apply to them or anybody who's outside of the EU. Um, then, and you're saying, look, and I do process data of people in the EU, and that's quite clear, and I need to do that, and I want to do that because I'm doing business there, and it's an important part of my business. What do I need to do? I don't have an establishment in the, in the EU. Well, the, the requirement is quite simple. You need to appoint a representative, and the representative's role is essentially to be like a liaison between the idea is, you see, that if the, 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 the EU or the GDPR has extraterritorial effect, it applies outside the EU. But the, 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 the concept of the representative is, is, is based on the idea that EU, people in the EU shouldn't have to go abroad 
internationally to enforce their rights. They should be able to enforce their rights locally where they exist and where they operate themselves. And that's why you need to have a representative there who will be accountable locally uh, to deal with, with, you know, if there are uh, GDPR um, rights exercise, subject access requests, any other kind of access request or, or other uh, GDPR requests that might be raised by the, uh, by the data subject, then the, 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 the representative is there to, to deal with that and to be the kind of intermediary in dealing with uh, those requests. Similarly, if a, a supervisory authority uh, in, the, uh, in, 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 in any of the EU member states wishes to or has, has, has uh, communication with uh, a data controller or a data processor, it um, and the data processor isn't in the EU, it will uh, seek to do that through a representative appointed locally. And, um, and the representative needs to be able to deal with the um, supervisory authority and indeed the data subjects in the language of the member state that they are located in. So, so it's an important uh, facility to, 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 to have access to as well is, is the translation services. So in summary, a representative is somebody who, um, who knows a good amount about data protection. But so typically you will be um, looking to hire somebody who is a lawyer or a data protection consultant or um, you know, there are firms that are specifically set up for this service now, um, but they will have people who know a lot about data protection. And, um, and, and as Floor says, their role is to act as an intermediary between the data subject and um, you, the data controller, if they've got a complaint or you've not, um, you know, properly fulfilled a data subject request, um, and to uh, liaise with, with the supervisory authorities. So you might be thinking, well, Floor seems a decent chat. So Floor offers representative services, and we're going to tell you a little bit more about those in a bit. So you might be thinking, Floor seems a decent chat. Um, I'll have him as my representative. But the problem is, is that you've got no data subjects in Ireland. So Floor, do you want to say a little bit about that and how people need to choose their representative? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 one of the requirements is that you need to have data subjects in the in the in the member state where the representative is based now that said you don't have to have all or the majority of your data subjects in the member state where the representative is based i mean technically you need one uh, but you certainly need some uh, to be there to give you if you, if you like your 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 in law, we would say kind of locus standi. Your 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 uh, ticket in would be that you have one uh, or more data subjects in that member state. Once you do, you can appoint a representative there. Um, no, on the other hand, you might say, well, look, the, the the majority of my subjects are in a particular member state, whichever you deal with most frequently, and then you might say um, it would make sense for me to appoint a representative there uh, in the first instance because. They will speak the language in that locality and, 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 and in that member state and so on. Um, but the point is, once you have the entitlement to appoint a representative in any member state, that representative will um, suffice for you for all member states of the EU. So yeah, you don't so need you, to have a representative yeah, in, in, in yeah. each one. So if you've got customers in, in five different European countries, um, you don't need to have one in each of those separate countries. One will suffice. You may choose to have more because maybe you've got two big um, EU customer bases, one in France, one in Germany, say, and it would make sense for you to have representatives in both of those jurisdictions. But legally, you only need to have one. And legally, that needs to be some somebody in a jurisdiction where you have a number of data subjects. Um, so um, it doesn't have to be the majority, but, um, you know, you've certainly got to have some there. Now, obviously, people are favouring um, the Republic of Ireland because um, of the language issue. You know, if, if you're not fluent in French or German or whatever, um, then although saying that, I'm sure there are services that, that, you know, English is a pretty international language, but I know that people will favor the Republic of Ireland. So, and so if you do have data subjects in the Republic of Ireland, it's a popular choice, let's put it that way. Um, so let's talk about representative services for, um, what, what does the GDPR say about what a representative needs to do? It doesn't really say much, um, to be honest, other than that. I mean, it, it, it sets out, I suppose, the responsibilities of the representative and, 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 and that the representative has to be accountable. And there's, a, there's, there's, there's even uh, the suggestion in the recitals of the GDPR that the, that the representative should be kind of amenable to sanction is the wording that's used there. And it's effectively to, to so, so that the, the representative, if you like, is taking on a, 
potential liability or exposure by representing the business. Um, but ultimately, um, and, and the European Data Protection Board has issued some guidance on this in its, in its guidance on territoriality. It has, it has uh, looked at the whole issue of representatives and issued uh, uh, updated guidance on that um, uh, following consultation there last year. Um, and they have said that the primary thing that the data, that the, data rep, uh, the, 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 the representative will need to do is to ensure that it has access to the what's called the Article 30 record of processing. So under Article 30, I'm sure, as your very well informed audience will be aware, Suzanne, um, the, the business has to have its a record of processing. It's like it's data inventory, if you like, to know where all the data is and, and, and have it uh, so that it can be, it can show that it, I, I'm complying with the GDPR because I know what I've got and where it is and what type of data it is and so on. And that's the Article 30 record is what it's known as technically. Now, um, the, the representative will want to uh, be assured by the business that the business has carried out that exercise and maintained that, 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 that data inventory and can produce it to the representative uh, if required, if it's requested by the uh, supervisory authority. Um, so that's the primary kind of technical uh, thing that, that we'll need to see. I mean, the way that we have structured the business is we have, we have chosen to provide, we don't, it isn't a legal service that we provide, we provide it through a, through a limited company as a separate um, representative service. And, and we work on the basis that, I mean, ultimately, you know, this isn't about us going in and, 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 and doing a kind of a, an extensive audit or GDPR kind of, you know, exercise. It's about saying, look, the GDPR compliance is the responsibility of the business, the data controller, the processor. We will be relying on your representations to the fact that that's the case. And in the event that these, 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 we're requested to produce these things that we would expect the business is able to produce these for us. So, um, so ultimately the role of the rep, I mean, I mean the representative will, will be there to deal with as a subject access requests and other requests like that from data subjects. Um, if you have data breaches and need to notify a breach, um, the representative would be, um, um, you know, an obvious uh, intermediary to, to, to assist in doing that. And of course that has to happen in a 72 hour window. So it's, 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 it's a, that's a very, very tight um, and can be urgent kind of time frame. Um, and, and as I say, they're there to deal with the, the, the supervisory authorities. The, the, other, the only other key kind of, this is very much an emerging kind of profession, if you like, it didn't exist prior to, to May 20, 2018. And it isn't something where there's a, 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 a very long and well-established kind of, you know, code of practice or, or set of kind of guidelines about how, how one might go about it. And the GDPR doesn't give us a huge amount of, 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 of detail. Um, the, the one thing that has to be done is the representative must be appointed by an agreement. So there has to be a formal agreement in place appointing a representative. It can't be, I just say, well, I have my cousin Jimmy over there and he's, he's my representative. Um, it, there needs to be a formal legal agreement in place. And as I say, there are very serious obligations being undertaken by the representative, um, which um, uh, you know, have, have to be properly um, uh, documented and, and, and recorded. Yes, and I would say, you know, do do your due diligence carefully on your representative, because I think that a lot of uh, fly-by-night companies have realized that this could be an additional revenue stream and, and know very little about GDPR and are, you know, popping up a website and um, trying to entice people to use their representative services. So do check out the credibility very carefully of people who are offering these services and make sure that they really do understand what yeah, they're I mean, talking about. I couldn't agree with you more, Suzanne. I mean, like, for instance, one of the things that we've taken very seriously, I mean, as in, this is, this is, this is very new and it was something that we, 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 we had to you know, take some time to consider was it a service we would be prepared to offer to be frank because mm -hmm. as i say there are there are serious kind of concerns around liability and exposure that you might take on by doing it um but you know we've we've we've, we've, we've satisfied ourselves and put the structure in place to be able to do that but so we put in place insurance to ensure that we have that there uh, you know you know we, we, we have iso 27001 because we see that as a critically important part of the thing is that the business can rely on the 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 the, the um uh, you know there the, the, there's a serious um uh, business entity that's there um providing this um it's, it's, it's essentially like an extra piece of, well, it's, it's, it's essential compliance. I mean, you can't pick and choose which parts of the GDPR you comply with. If, 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 if you're concerned with any of them, they, they all apply to you. Um, and, uh, and this just has to be done. So, so, so we've taken uh, a lot of care to ensure that we're in a position to, to do it correctly and, 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 and very cost effectively and easily for businesses uh, who, who need to meet the requirement. 
Well, let's come on to that um, before we see, I see we can, we've got lots of questions, which we'll be very happy to answer, but let's come on to how you help your clients with these services for. Um, so can you give us an idea of, um, you know, the packages that you do and the prices that people can expect to pay for that? Well, we, I mean, I suppose the, the business that we've evolved has been a very much, we've, we, we offer a, um, it's, it's a, uh, we provide a, I suppose, a no frills, uh, services the way that we provide that are, or we provide the basic um, Article 27 compliance package because we don't want to, as I say, we, we didn't want to set this up so that it's like you have to engage a lawyer and pay a lot of legal fees and go through a whole kind of uh, process to, 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 to somehow be be certified or, or, or satisfied that you've got the representative in place. We said, look, we want to create this as a very, very simple um, compliance exercise that that that, that the, the business can can take care of very easily. So we've set up a separate uh, as a limited uh, entity to do that uh, um, to, to carry out the role. Um, our entire process is completely automated. Um, the onboarding process is is is, is all entirely automated and, and very straightforward. Um, and um, we have, as I say, put in place. ISO twenty seven zero zero one, so that the, the the whole package is 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 very reliable and uh, and uh, people can have faith in it, um, and so we, we we provide the annual representation on a fixed fee annual retainer basis, and that is to provide you with the representation. You've got the representative appointed. You've complied with the requirement of Article twenty seven, and people can put it in their privacy notice. You can, and, we, we provide you with the information yeah. you need yeah. to put on your privacy notice, so that you, you can put it wherever wherever you're, you're you're collecting data. You will be demonstrating that you're you're in compliance, so that anybody coming to your website can see quite easily. Well, straight away, I can see this business is, is obviously serious. They've they, they've complied with this basic requirement, which is going to be one external indicator of whether or not the business is 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 is, is basically compliant. Um, and so that's we simply do it like that, and we don't impose any other charges or, or or obligations for us to do anything for the time being. If it's the case that we need to become involved, if there are data subject requests, or if there is a, a breach notification requirement, or if there is contact from supervisor authority, we can do that as a as, a, as an additional um, uh, charge. But uh, unless that happens, it's a very much a simple fixed fee. Um, uh, arrangement and uh, we can arrange that on an annual or a monthly basis. Um, we have decided to structure it that we base the, the pricing on the size of the business and uh, and most of our businesses and, and the types of business that we have tend to operate with and the types of businesses who tended to, 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 I suppose, be aware of this requirement, to be quite honest, up until now, have tended to have been larger businesses. And so we would have, we would have kind of relatively large turnover companies would, 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 would have gone for this. Um, but I'm aware of the fact that I know your audience, I know you have the Small Business Academy, so that, I mean, your audience may, may have a lot of uh, perhaps smaller businesses. So we've created a special um, a tier specifically for uh, the, the, your audience members here today, Suzanne, and, 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 and the business owners here, which we hope will, uh, will, they will find uh, beneficial for them. Fantastic. So I'm going to put a link um, in the chat box now so you can have a look at Floor's different uh, packages. But what's the lowest price that they start at, Floor? Well, we start at for businesses. This new um, special tier that you've created for the, us. The, the, the two hundred and fifty um, turnover uh, up to two hundred and fifty turnover tier is um, um, is uh, forty seven euro a month, or four nine seven if you wish to pay annually. And there's a there's a saving in doing so, um, and that um, provides. Uh, the business with um, um, with 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 full uh, Article Twenty Seven compliance. It can be used in um, that'll cover any business up to a million in turnover. Um, it's up to ten global employees, uh, and on that basis, we will cover one one group entity, one uh, uh, business entity, and one uh, web domain. Uh, so it can be used um, uh, if 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 businesses have have other requirements. And they, you know, if, if they're maybe they're under that revenue level, but they have slightly different requirements in terms of their, their different levels of employees or different requirements in terms of they have group entities yeah. or, 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 or web domains that they want to get covered in addition to the main one. If they want to just contact us, we can prepare a custom, uh, a custom quote for, for any of your, your audience uh, members who, who might be interested. Okay, awesome. Uh, yes, euros, uh, Valerie. Yes. Yes, everything is priced in euros. euros. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I've put that in the, um, the chat box. So do take a look at that. Um, what I've also mentioned, Susanna, I see you've put it in there, but just that we have prepared a, a, a special Brexit guide uh, for, um, uh, for your audience. And um, 
it is in there in the um, in in the chat at the moment. Uh, if anybody wants to to um, uh, to download that, they might find it useful uh, to give them a little more uh, specific information on the whole topic. Um, yeah, do download that Brexit guide. And I've just seen a, a comment from Pamela saying, as a small as a small business, that's another expense too many. Well, the, unfortunately, the point is there are regulatory costs of doing business. And um, I mean, unfortunately, Flora and I didn't write the GDPR um, that put this provision in there. Um, but I mean, if, you, I, if you do, if you know, if, if this does apply to you, it is a legal obligation, and you know, it's for you, for you to decide whether you want to be in compliance or not, and 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 have those risks that are associated with not being in compliance. So, unfortunately, there are many costs of doing business, and this is one of them. Um, and and you know, don't shoot the messenger is all Flora and I can say. Well, well, just, of of you know. course, I mean, it is, it is, it you know, because it, it really pains me, and it is just one of those. It's like that all of these costs, all these problems we're seeing now in the in, in Kent with the the lorries and so on. I mean, and these are just the, the the consequences of us having you know international borders now, and um and this is uh, and I understand now. It just by the way, the, you'll see that the tier there is the. the Tier that we've set there is from 250 euro up to to, to a million euro is the, the 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 basic level and that isn't available anywhere else on our website by the way this is a special offer we've created for 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 you as Suzanne's community here today if anybody is under the 250 threshold by the way please reach out to us and we'll see if there's anything uh, we can do uh, to help you um, there as well I mean this is this is very much a, a very new area. Um, that we have just um, been looking at now since Brexit has. So, sorry, Flo. So the, the the lowest price on your band was two fifty turnover upwards, and you're saying if anyone's exactly. below, if anybody's below underneath that, and, and and is you know, please come and speak to us, and we'll see if there's anything we can do to take care of things uh, okay. for you. Um, okay. So so yeah, depending on the size of your business, if you're a very small business with up to two fifty thousand turnover, Flo is saying contact him, and they may be able to work something else out for you if, if um, absolutely you know, yeah. yeah so that's you know, very generous we, we've you. literally just put this together now for 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 Suzanne's community here today and we are very much open to uh, seeing what the what the need is like out there and see how we might be able to help that um and yeah no I, I totally understand it it's not something that we're here if you like you know <laughs> delighted to be coming to you with new regulation or additional costs I mean it's just simply it is a requirement it's the law it, and and again as, as I started the conversation, the simplest way to avoid this, frankly, is just to say, look, okay, I'm not going to do business with people in the EU because that's an expense that I'm not going to incur. And I think if that's your approach, it's a perfectly sensible, sound uh, business decision. And, you know, that may be the correct strategy. Um, now, if you say, well, look, I actually do want to do business in the EU, then Unfortunately, then, unless you have an establishment there, this triggers this requirement. And, and as I said, it's not like we can pick and choose and say, I'm going to be compliant over here on GDPR, but I'm not going to be compliant over here. Um, and, um, and, and so this is just, and we have just, just, this is, we think the best value, easiest, simplest, and most straightforward way we can take care of it for you uh, without you having to incur engage lawyers uh, and do all of that kind of, uh, you know, and have additional ongoing costs uh, of, 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 of professional services. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so that's how Floor can help you. Now, as we've said, you know, you have to have data subjects in the Republic of Ireland to be able to go and use Floor services, okay? So do bear that in mind. And I don't personally know anybody else to recommend in all other jurisdictions at the moment. So. Um, I'm afraid you're kind of on your own there. But as I say, do do your due diligence. If you are going to somebody in France or Germany or wherever, do your due diligence and make sure that they've not just, you know, set up overnight, know nothing about GDPR. They've not got the insurance in place that Floor's been talking about or the ISOs, et cetera. You know, make sure that they are a reputable outfit. And often established law firms will be offering this, although I have to say that they're probably going to be a lot more than Floor's just uh, you know, the, the price that Floor's just mentioned. So, um, yes, I will try and expand my network of people into, into more into continental Europe to try and come up with some contacts for you. But certainly if you do have um, customers and data subjects in the Republic of Ireland, then Floor is um, is absolutely my recommendation. And, 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 and if anybody has any queries on that, please feel free. In terms, people ask in terms of contact information, if you just follow the link in, uh, I think Suzanne put the link there of the offer, uh, it'll have an access, you'll, you'll have a link to the website and everything there. Um, and if anybody wants to reach out or connect on LinkedIn, I'm, I'm, I'm at uh, Flora McCarthy, F-L-O-R, by the way, it's funny, funny name, F-L-O-R-M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y on LinkedIn. 
Um, and um, but I just I, I, I would I would emphasize Suzanne's link there because that is a custom link that we created for Suzanne and the pricing that's there isn't available uh, on the on the, uh, the on the public website uh, for the time being uh, because this is something we put together specially for this audience um, as a result of the recent developments with Brexit and yeah, so on. Yeah, and I think I'll put I'll put that link in my GDPR module as well, Floor. Um, so that people Super. have that there Super. too. And we'd be happy to, spend, if anybody's got any queries, please don't hesitate. We're here to help and particularly always, and we know, I mean, we have great, you know, love the Suzanne Dibble, you know, community because you're also kind of, if you like, focused on GDPR compliance. And that gives us great confidence in, in being able to, to, to work with you guys. Awesome. Okay, so thank you, Floor. Um, and um, thanks for your comments about um, the webinar having been very useful. We've got still got um, a good 20 minutes or so to answer questions. Um, so um, please do, if you haven't already, if you posted a question in the chat, copy it over and pop it in the Q&A because we're going to be um, going through that. Um, so I just want to deal with one question, a really basic question that I've just seen in the chat actually, and then I'm gonna look at the Q&A box. Uh, Rhiannon says, if you have an online course and you're only holding names and emails, would you still need a representative? Yes, if those people are in the EU, then you're processing the data, personal data of um, EU data subjects. And yes, this absolutely applies to you. Doesn't matter if it's physical goods, if it's um, services, if it's digital downloads, anything like that. It's not really relevant to what the thing is you're providing. It's all about the data that you're processing. And if you're processing the data of and people within the EU and the GDPR applies to you. The EU GDPR applies to you um, because we now have the UK GDPR and the EU GDPR. And just um, one thing to mention there, Suzanne, I think, because I did see it in the, in the chat and maybe we're going to come to questions in a second, but I mean, I mean the UK GDPR is essentially a, a, an identical kind of copy of the GDPR and it has an Article 27 too. So yeah. if, I mean, if, if you're an EU based business, and you're processing the data of people in the UK, but you don't have a in the UK, the same requirement applies. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's there. Now we can take care of both, uh, but um, just to be aware that it it, it, it cuts both ways um, uh, completely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's look at the Q&A box. My gosh, we've got 51 questions, Floor. I'm not sure how much time we'll let's have. Let's talk fast, Suzanne. Let's see how we can, and apologies if I don't answer them in the correct order, because for some reason they don't show up in the correct order in my Q&A box, so. Um, so uh, I imagine quite a few about, we, can't, we cannot advise specifically on whether you need a representative, okay? If you give us like, I've got 10 people on my mailing list do I, in the EU, do I need a representative? We can't tell you because we don't know the exact circumstances of your company and, and your data processing. If you're not sure, then you need to speak to somebody you know, on a one-to-one -one basis. And I've, I've got GDPR consultants that I can refer you to and um, that will be able to help you with that. Um, um, or indeed, you know, um, reach out to Floor and, and he'll advise as to whether, you know, you need, um, are, you, are you happy to do that, Floor? I mean, we can provide you with guidance on it. I mean, as you say, ultimately the business, I mean, and the reason we've structured the pricing the way it is, is we don't do kind of, if you like, you know, consulting, it, yeah. uh, we don't Understand. build that in. Uh, yeah. But if, 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 you know, I mean, you, you, the business would need to just satisfy itself, with, I mean, because that's, that's obviously a, a key yeah. Yeah. risk kind of decision really. Exactly. You know, Okay, so is GDPR necessary if I'm selling to a small number of individuals in the EU? It's a handful at the moment. How many customers do I have before GDPR becomes relevant, necessary? Um, so if you look at, I mean, this is really back to territorial scope of the whole of the GDPR and not just the issue of representatives. So if you haven't work, worked out whether GDPR applies to your business, um, then you need to do that ASAP. And this is dealt with in Article 3. And it says that GDPR applies to the processing of personal data of data subjects who are in the EU um, by a controller or processor who is not established in the EU, where the processing activities are related to the offering of goods or services, irrespective of, what, irrespective of whether a payment in the, in, of the data subject is required to such data subjects in the union. So you're offering goods or services to people in the EU, or you're monitoring their behavior as far as their behavior takes place within the EU. So certainly, um, you know, I think I've done a couple of videos on this, on territorial scope um, in my Facebook group, GDPR for Online Entrepreneurs, but there isn't a, um, a cutoff, unfortunately. You know, there isn't a, uh, there's no guidance that says if you've only got 1% of people on your database that are from the EU, ignore GDPR, okay? There is no guidance like that. 
So it really depends in all the circumstances whether, um, you know, whether it, it, it in actual fact applies or not. And certainly if you're, you know, if you're targeting people in the EU with Facebook ads or anything like that, then absolutely that will bring you within scope. If you're selling in euros, absolutely that will bring you in scope. Um, if you are, um, uh, certainly if you have, I'm not, I can't even really go into percentages because you might have a huge list um, and, and it's only 1%, but that's a significant enough number to bring you in scope. So it's, um, there isn't unfortunately a, a sort of cutoff between where you've only got a few people in the EU. And, and, and really what I was saying earlier about um, Tim Turner and his blog post was really about territorial scope as opposed to representatives. And, and, and he was saying that, you know, he was taking the view that because he doesn't, um, he doesn't target people in the EU, he doesn't sell in euros, um, he, um, if people happen to find him, then, you know, they've, they've kind of snuck in. He, he personally was really sticking his neck out and saying that he didn't believe that the EU GDPR applied to his consultancy. Okay. Um, so that is a question that you all need to think about. And I, again, I can, if you're really stuck on that, I can introduce you to GDPR consultants that will look at your entire processing and will give you a view as to whether you do need to comply with the GDPR or not. Um, but um, probably a good starting point is I've done some videos in my free Facebook group, GDPR for Online Entrepreneurs. If you go in there, if you look at the unit section, you should see the video, the, the list of videos with all the links to the videos, and you can search for territorial scope and, and start with those. Uh, and the book, indeed. Thank you, Flora. I'm so bad at promoting my own book. And yes, in here, obviously, there is a, a whole chapter on um, territorial scope. But unfortunately, we, you know, I've said all I can about it in here and in the videos. It is still not going to say to you categorically yes or no, OK? Because I do not know the exact ins it's, and outs. It's got to be a judgment call in each case, and you're going to have to carry out the assessment. And, you know, it's yeah. like any other aspect of the GDPR. It's, it's, it's the accountability principle applies, and the business, the business has to do the, 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 the ass assessment internally. Yeah, absolutely. OK, so next question. Just Does GDPR Brexit changes? affect our email processes, e.g. MailerLite or MailChimp, if they are based in the EU? Um, that's probably more a question around data flows, I, I expect. Um, and of course, we know that at the moment, we have a kind of a transition period to allow for adequacy to be, to be, to be determined, and hopefully it will be, because that would just eliminate a massive, massive headache for businesses quite separately yeah. from this yeah. requirement. Um, so uh, I think for the time being, that question around uh, server location and so yeah. on is probably deferred until we see what the adequacy yeah. uh, findings so are. So anonymous, um, if you missed my last session on um, what did Brexit mean for data protection, if you're a member of my legal academy or you have an up-to-date subscription of my GDPR module, then the recording of that is in there. And we dealt with all of that in that webinar. So I suggest you go and have a look at that. But as Flor says, this, the short answer is we have a grace period of six months um, in which to get adequacy, which means that data transfers between the EU and the UK can continue without additional safeguards in place. But we're gonna keep you updated on that. Um, but if you, if you miss that session, then go and, and, and have, a, have a watch of that. Okay, Joe says, will this also be relevant to VAs, virtual assistants, who work virtually and never meet the client? Yes, I think we've covered that. It really doesn't depend how your business is structured, what you're selling, anything like that. It's all about the processing of the data. Yeah. And if you're processing the data of people within the EU, then this is a consideration that you have to work through and decide whether you need to appoint a representative or not. Floor, you're gonna add something there. No, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's it's it's. I mean, it's not about where the the VA is located. It's about where the, the the data subjects are located. And if you're processing data of data subjects in the EU, then this is 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 quite likely triggered. Yeah. And um, Hannah Maria says, uh, greetings from London. Uh, she's a strategy consultant with a customer base in the UK and Scandinavia. I'm selling strategy consultancy services and coaching. Keen to hear how dynamic of a few clients per year, but with a relatively high value is treated. Um, so this is, I suppose, in terms of um, whether she has, uh, you know, she's got a few, a I guess a few clients in Scandinavia is probably the point here. A few clients in Scandinavia 
um, and, and whether the representative uh, obligation is function is triggered. So, so really, I suppose the question is, it's not so much whether the, remember the, the question about the representative is you've worked out that EU GDPR applies to you because you're processing the data of data subjects in the EU. And then the second question is, you've not got an establishment in the EU. Okay, they're your two questions for working out whether you need a representative. I think what we've, we're sort of straying into is questions as to whether the EU GDPR applies at all and, and questions about territorial scope of that. Um, and that really is what I said in the, in the answer to the first question um, in terms of there is no, uh, you know, there's no sort of dividing line where just a few uh, clients are okay. You have to look at it on, um, you know, the totality of your individual circumstances and, and come to a view on that. And again, my comment about my, the chapter in my book and the free vid videos in my Facebook group might help with that. Okay. Um, Louise says, what's the definition of occasional? I think you mentioned this floor in, in whether you needed to appoint a representative or not. Yeah, there, there isn't a definition, unfortunately. Um, but it really, I suppose, any kind of regular processing, I think, is going to take you out of occasional is, 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 is the short answer. Um, occasional is very much, you know, um, sort of random or, 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 or you know, it, 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 if I mean, it, just in the example that was just cited there, if somebody was a small number of clients who they're dealing with on, on an ongoing basis, well, then that's not going to be occasional because you're going to have kind of ongoing regular processing. Um, um, and I, I, unfortunately, it's it's a term that we don't have a precise definition of. Um, but um, I think where 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 we're, where we're dealing with people on a regular basis um, and processing their data regularly, um, I, I think that's going to move us out of occasional very quickly. It's I don't think it's going to be a terribly helpful um, saver for many businesses who are dealing with 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 real people in the EU on a on a regular basis in their business. Yeah, uh, so Carrie Ann has another question about uh, you know the number of orders in Europe. Do they need a rep? Exactly the same comment as we've just discussed for the previous two questions. Um, Richard says if you have a website which has the country domain like SellingShop.fr for France, is that counted as an establishment? Um, okay, so I refer you again to the chapter in my book. Um, it's chapter. Hang on a minute. Let me find it. Um, I had it earlier. Uh, where has it gone? There's a case um, that deals with this and, and specifically the, um, here we are, Welt, Weltimo and Neia. <laughs> I probably said that completely incorrectly. N-A-I-H, how do you think we would say that floor? N-A-I-H. N-I-A-H. Well, see, I, I would, I would not, because a Cork person would probably pronounce that all wrong. So I'm not even going to go. <laughs> That's it. So oh, yeah. I'll tell you about that case, okay? So the the um, Court of Justice of the European U Union confirmed that the place of incorporation wasn't a deciding factor, which is what I talked about earlier, and that the presence of a single representative may be sufficient to have an establishment within a certain territory if that representative asks acts with a sufficient degree of stability. So back to that stability point. And they also considered that the website was solely targeted to, in this case, Hungarians, and um, that they had a representative in Hungary who represented um, the company in administrative and legal proceedings. They had a bank account in that country for the recovery of debts, and they used a letterbox in Hungary for the management of day-to-day -day business, business matters. Um, and um, and that was held to be um, an establishment. Um, so um, even though... Um, yes, so, I mean, you would see those criteria like bank account, there's money flowing yeah. through, people involved, you know, boots on the ground, if you like. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's those physical kinds of indicators that, that we're going to be looking at. And, and just having a domain isn't going to be sufficient, I'm afraid. I think it's an indicator, Richard. It's certainly One thing, an, one element. Yeah. Indicator. Um, but but if ever if the matter ever did go to court, which it did in the case of Weltimo and, and Nea, or however you say that, um, then that's one of the things that that would be looked at together with you know all those other types of issues that I've just talked about. In this particular case, that Weltimo case, Weltimo was incorporated in Slovakia, um, and its business was advertising properties on its website. But the target market was Hungary, with Hungarian properties being featured, and the text of the adverts was written in hung Hungarian. 
Complaints were made to the Hungarian Data Protection Authority because properties weren't being removed when requested. Weltemo argued that the Hungarian Data Protection Authority did not have jurisdiction to take action because it was incorporated in Slovakia. Um, but they basically, on, on all of those factors, decided that um, it was established in, in Hungary and that therefore the Hungarian Data Protection Authority had standing to, um, you know, to, um, uh, to rule on that. But the mere fact that your website is accessible by people within the EU doesn't mean um, that you have an establishment within the EU. OK, so um, the fact if, if um, so in answer to your question, Richard, um, it's not counted as an establishment, but it would um, uh, if there were other matters that were, um, you know, like I've, I've just mentioned there, like having a a bank account in France or a, a, a representative or a sales agent in France or something like that, then that would all add to the picture. But solely, um, solely having a website that is accessible. Now, that's interesting. A website that is accessible by people within the EU doesn't mean that you have an establishment. Um, but yours is an actual, you know, it's got the France suffix. So um, on balance, I would say it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's an establishment. You have to have that stable um, presence um, and, and effective and real exercise of activity through stable arrangements. Okay, um, Anonymous says, I can't see any other questions. Do you know why this might be? No, I don't. Um, Anonymous says, can I sell products internationally except for the EU? Is it possible to block anyone from the EU? I covered that earlier. So since Brexit, the UK is now not subject to the um, the rules on EU geo-blocking or, or discrimination between member states. But the point is, is that if you do sell to EU member states, you can't discriminate between them. Yeah. So you couldn't sell to France and block Germany, for example. OK, but you can choose to not sell into the EU. My pitch has gone all funny. I think it's the sun streaming in. We've so. got this crazy sun, low yeah, sun it's weird, coming isn't in it? here. I know, it's like, <laughs> so apologies for that. Not much I can do about that. Um, I have to put my. Well, I, I was doing a, a series of um, webinars over the summer floor, and because um, I've had to decamp into my orangery whilst the family are, are working from home, and um, I had this series of webinars, and this kept happening in the summer. You know, much more so than the winter, obviously. And so um, we, we, we couldn't get anyone in to do blinds in here because of you know lockdown and everything. So I literally had my camper, back, camper van blinds stuck to the windows. It was it was um, it was not the look I was going for really. But it, oh well, good job right. Needs um, so Julie says I have a client in Jersey and I'm selling an online course. She was asking about VAT and tax and asking whether it makes a difference if she is a business or an individual. And I was totally confused. You had advice around this. No, um, because A, um, we're not accountants or tax advisors. And B, um, this is a webinar about representatives. So I suggest you speak to your um, accountant or tax advisor about that. Right. Anonymous says, if you have a website selling goods to customers worldwide, would you need to have a representative if the only data collected is in order to fulfill the order rather than to have on a list to market to. Um, no, totally relevant that distinction. If you're processing data, it doesn't. We're not here talking about um, grounds of lawful processing. Jolly good that you've got a contractual lawful ground of processing of that data. Um, however, it's all about pro just any processing of um, personal but, data uh, yeah, it, 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 in the EU. The key point is, is it personal data? I mean, if your customers are, um, you know, legal entities, companies that are not human human beings, you know, private individuals, then perhaps if it's not personal data, maybe it doesn't apply to you. But if, if you're if you're processing personal data, then that would trigger it. But you, I mean, there's still, there, you, I, I would be sure that if you have customers, even if they're organizations, you will be processing personal data. Um, so unless, unless you purely have an info at, um, email address and, and you're talking to John and you don't know his surname and there's you know 20, 20 odd Johns at that organization um, I'm pretty sure you'll be processing personal data okay um, anonymous says are there other countries outside the EU that require representatives if not then I'll just target global except EU because it's not worth the hassle um, so well I mean this really comes down to other countries data protection laws um, and um, as far as I'm aware, Floor, there, are, there is no other legislation at the moment that requires... Yeah, I'm not aware of any. 
Obviously, we've got the UK GDPR, which does you got the, you got the UK, it. you need to, UK which you GDPR have to does. Here, yeah, so in the UK, then you're covered. Yeah, so UK GDPR does, um, EU GDPR does, California, I don't, California new um, data protection law, I don't think that does, Brazil, not, don't think that does, um, but I don't know is, is the honest answer to that. So you'd need to look at on a... On Certainly, a, this on requirement a, only applies to the EU or the UK, depending on where you happen to be based, but uh, yeah. so, 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 so that's... Yeah, but as to whether other legislation has a similar concept, um, mm. I'm not entirely not sure. I'm not aware, but you would have to check in each jurisdiction in which you have data subjects about that. Okay, Anonymous says, with an online exercise rehab business, would I need a representative for processing payments for online programs with all payments processed in pounds? I'm focused on UK clients primarily now. So again, you know, this is back to territorial scope of EU GDPR. And if you are, um, you know, the conversation that we had around, if, you've, if you're not targeting people in the EU, if you've only got a couple of people um, that are, you know, from the EU, et cetera, then um, that's, that's, you know, the judgment call that you need to make. So we, we've covered that a number of times. So hopefully you heard my answers to those earlier questions. Carol says, what if you have a personal data what if you have personal data presented to you via an EU registered company and you are paid in euros by them? Yep. So again, similar question. And um, uh, and if you're paid in euros, then um, it's not it's not so much that it, it's it's again it's the looking at the that that um, Article Three territorial scope. Are you offering goods or services to data subjects in the union? Are you monitoring the, the behavior of people in the in the union as, in, as so far as their behavior takes place within the, the EU? So that, that's the two questions that you need to um, really take a close look at and decide whether EU GDPR applies to you or not. OK, and then if it does apply and if you don't have an establishment in the EU, that's when the question of whether you need a representative comes into play. Um, Jan says, I have an online store and occasionally I have customers from the EU. <laughs> okay, same question, kind of covered that ad nauseum now. Nikki, uh, we've got an office in Dublin with staff. We have a couple of customers in Germany and France as well, but only three or four. Are we okay to serve them through the Dublin office or do we need people in Germany and France? Well, so this is, this is the question of um, whether you have an establishment in the EU and you only need one establishment in the EU. You don't need them in every jurisdiction in which you have EU data subjects. So if it sounds to me, if you've got an office in Dublin with staff, then you have an EU establishment and you will not need to put a representative in place. If, yeah, if you, if, you, if you have the establishment there, that will cover you for the entire EU. I suppose it, it would be worth getting some, some, some confirmation or advice that that's sufficient for, 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 for an, from an establishment point of view. But if you have an establishment in Dublin, then you've got an establishment in the EU and you have no need, further need. You don't have to have an establishment in every EU member state or anything. You can deal with anybody in the EU. The freedom of movement uh, will cover you on that. Yeah. Alison says, it seems that this is a potential minefield. What if you don't have a representative, but people find your e-business online and sign up to a mailing list? Would we need to remove them from the list? Um, well, as Floor said, you know, the issue is you work out whether the EU GDPR applies to you, which we've already talked about. If you don't have an establishment in the EU, the requirement to appoint a representative exists. Um, it's for you to decide whether you want to be compliant or not. If you're not compliant, there's obviously all the risks that are associated with that. And if you don't want to take that risk, and if you don't want to pay the money to have a representative, then yes, you can not sell into the EU. Or hold any, you know, data on EU. Or individuals. hold, yeah, or, and, and, and delete and, EU data, yeah. It's, you know, it's, and it's a perfectly legitimate um, thing to do. Yeah. Anonymous says, I have a side business in the UK. And um, Floor, how long are you okay? Are you okay to carry on for, by the way? Yeah, sure, I'm fine, yeah. You're okay, okay, great. Um, uh, Anonymous says, I have a side business in the UK and I am only a data controller. Do I still need to appoint an EU representative? I'm, think I'm selling a membership site using third party platforms and I don't process the personal data directly. Okay, so you've got processors who are fit people like Thinkific Platform and ConvertKit. Um, you've got a side business in, okay, a side business in the UK um, do you mean that 
you're mainly based in the EU or you've just got a small business in the UK. Not sure about that. Um, but again, um, the question of whether you need to appoint an EU rep. First question, does EU GDPR apply to me? And that's that question about if you're offering goods or services to people in the EU or are you monitoring the behaviour of people in the EU? That's the first question. If you're not and if you want to block them, then the EU GDPR does not apply to you. Second question, if it does apply to you, then you have to consider whether you've got an establishment in the EU. If you don't, you need to appoint a representative. It's that easy, okay? And the key right. point is that it's not where the business is located, it's where the data subjects are located. And if, yes. and if you have data subjects in the business and, and you say you're only a data controller, unfortunately, the data controller is the really big kind of obligation under GDPR. And if you've got data subjects in the EU, then you know, it certainly triggers the question then as to whether you, 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 you have to appoint a representative. Yeah. Amanda says, I work for a small charity with approximately 5% of our membership in the EU. Are there any benchmarks on approximate costs of a representative service? Okay, that probably came in before, um, Floor, you, you um, explained your sure, I'll put that link up again there for anybody yeah. who needs it. Mary says, does it apply if you're selling B2B, not B2C? Um, this applies to B2B and B2C, but like Floor says, you know, if you're not processing personal data, um, then that's a different question, a different matter. But I would imagine that everybody um, who is, um, you know, if, if you're, if you're, the questions, if you're offering goods or services, and if you're monitoring the behaviour of people in the EU, you will be processing personal data, and um, and this will apply. Andrew says, what should a new business or expanding company do when choosing the country to appoint the representative? because you don't have any or a few customers in the EU yet, so can't decide based on the country with the largest customer base. Floor, what's your thoughts on that? I'm sorry, I was, I was engaged in the chat. Could, would you mind repeating? Oh, the sorry. Um, it's, um, so Andrew says, what should a new business or expanding company do when choosing the country in which to appoint the representative? Because you know they've only got a few customers in the EU at the moment and can't decide based on country with largest customer base at the moment. Um, I guess if you have a choice, uh, and you have um, uh, you have people located in different jurisdictions. I would probably choose the ones that suits you best, um, to be frank, or that 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 you find. I mean, again, this is ultimately. I, I think everything around GDPR is about showing respect for your your customers and 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 showing that you take their data seriously and their 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 data protection rights seriously. Uh, and and people are more and more kind of aware of this now and appreciated now. So you might choose to say, look. I want to appoint the representative, you know, I, 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 where I'm dealing with people most regularly. That's most going to be most convenient for, for them. Or, um, or alternatively, just look at the, the the different commercial factors involved. I mean, um, uh, quality of the service, uh, ease of use for you, and, um, and 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 ultimately then price as well, I suppose. Uh, but yep. um, uh, you have once you have once you have data subjects in the in the in the member state in question, you can choose to appoint your representative there. Great, thanks, Floor. Nicola says, I sell into different EU states and also to Australia and Hong Kong. Do I need to appoint a representative in these two as well? Um, I would go and, you know, get onto the mailing list of someone like me in Australia and Hong Kong and go onto their webinars. But as I said earlier, I'm not aware of similar representative yeah, sure. obligations in those, um, you know, their data protection laws. But you'll need to um, find an expert in those jurisdictions. And um, Muriel says the ICO says a branch office of a UK company located in the EU can act as the representative, even if the data subjects are primarily in another country. Has this changed? No, um, that doesn't go against anything that we've said. Um, if you have a branch office in the EU, then um, um, then, you know, the first question is, is that an establishment? Because if it is, um, then you don't need to appoint a representative that is effectively the representative, even though it's not called that because the obligation just doesn't well, arise. You're in the EU yourself then. So, so you know, you, 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 yes, you're exactly. doing business locally, if you like. Yes. Um, and even if the data subjects are primarily in another country, that's absolutely fine. Like we say, you, you don't have to have your representative in the jurisdiction where you have the majority of your data subjects. You just have to have some there. So like I was saying earlier with Floor, you might think Floor's a great chap and you really want to use his services because they're really affordable. But if you don't have data subjects in the Republic of Ireland, then you can't, you know, you can't use Floor. That's all the GDPR says about where you should appoint um, a representative. Uh, but no, if you have 
you know, if you have 90% of people in France and uh, data subjects in France and 10% in Germany, you could appoint a representative in Germany, but obviously it would make a lot more sense to appoint it in the jurisdiction where you've got 90% of your data subjects. Right, Anonymous says, if we're looking to grow our customer base in the EU, but don't yet know where the demand may be, how do you decide the locate? Okay, we've dealt with that question just before. Angela says, if I'm getting people to sign up to my mailing list, and so I'm processing their sign up data, but I don't ask where they live, how will I know whether I need a representative in their jurisdiction? Good question, Angela. Um, and um, the, I mean, there are, I think, some um, CRM systems that will detect that. Um, obviously, if you if people are customers, they will typically have entered their full mailing address, so you'll know that. Um, and um, you can look at the um, the suffix of their email address to work out whether it's an EU um, suffix or not. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure there probably will be some cases where um, you don't exactly know where people are coming from when they're signing up to your list. Um, so it's a good question. Flora, what's your thoughts on that? Um, I suppose this really comes down to the fundamentals of whether you're required to comply with the GDPR at all. And, and, and ultimately, under the GDPR, you are required to know, you know, what data you've got and on behalf of whom you hold it and, and, and so on. So, so, I mean, that's an exercise that really goes to the heart of your, 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 your data inventory and um and uh, and so on um I, I'm, I'm guessing that she knows that well that's the first question angela you know does the eu gdpr apply to you if you're saying you know you might have a few sneaking through then that's one issue but in terms of deciding where to appoint a representative you know she might if if you only if you're only at the start of your business for example and you suspect there's people um you know maybe you are targeting the eu um, and you're looking to appoint Floor as a representative, and you haven't got exact, um, you know, sort of um, visibility on where people are from, then yes, that could be an issue because you you might say, well, I'm going to appoint Floor because I suspect I've got people from the Republic of Ireland on my list, but you don't actually know. So yes, I think that's, um, you know, it's it's certainly a question uh, for people to consider. Um, but I mean, really, Angela, if you if you if you're, uh, you know, I think I would be looking at. Certainly, you know, when you get to the point of having customers in those um, jurisdictions, then you'll be getting their physical addresses. And, um, and that's what I would be uh, focusing on is, um, uh, is those customers. And also, um, you know, if you're, if you're targeting specific countries as well, then that wouldn't inform my decision on that. Okay, Anonymous says, what if you, oh, same question, if you don't know where all your data subjects live. Okay, we've mm -hmm. just addressed that. Maria Laura says, I make jumpers and scarves in the Midlands using yarns I buy from Italy. Um, I've got many Italians who subscribe to my newsletters, so I would probably opt for a representative in Italy. How do I find a suitable rep and what are the costs? Okay, maybe you asked that before we got onto that section. Um, so I unfortunately can't recommend anybody other than Floor, really. So um, if you are looking for reps in other jurisdictions, um, if you, oh, if you have subscribers in Ireland, then you're going to yes. find a representative here. Yeah. But yeah, if yeah. you're looking for an Italian one, I, I just I actually just don't know any off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, if you do, um, this this goes to anybody. Um, if you're in my GDPR Facebook group and you do find a rep that you would recommend, then please do feel free to um, uh, you know pop, pop, pop a little post in there with their details and 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 um, you know whether you would recommend them or not. That would be useful, I'm sure, for the community. Nicholas says, what types of questions should we ask potential reps we might want to use the services of? So, Floor, do you want to just um, do a quick reminder on that? Um, I, I think you'd want to see what their, first of all, you'd want to see what the, the, the terms and conditions of the appointment are. You'd want to see what level of kind of knowledge and, 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 and uh, understanding and expertise they would have in, in, in being able to carry out the role if you need to call on them. Um, as I say, one of the things we take very seriously, we've the, the ISO 27001, we think is a very important um, facet of, of what we do. Um, uh, the insurance that we carry, um, uh, I suppose it's the overall professionalism really uh, of the organization and what they do for you and what the kind of service um, entails. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you, Floor. Um, Mary says, any indication of the annual cost of a representative for a small business, say less than 100 customers in the EU? Um, well, uh, the way that Floor structures it, as he said, is, um, is through um, turnover, annual turnover. 
and um, number of group companies and domain name, I think, was your criteria. But, for, but as I say, if you wish to contact us, we can we'll be happy to 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 to, to give you a custom um, yeah. uh, call based on on your situation. Yeah, great. Laura says, um, if we're selling our products occasionally to the EU, um, they purchase in the. Okay, so this is another question. Uh, we've covered that about um, you know whether they need a rep or not. We can't answer individual questions like that. We can give you some guidance and then you need to look, at, look into that yourself and take a view. Um, Valerie says, what criteria or checklist should we be using to validate these reps? Okay, I think the floor has just answered that in terms of the thing questions that you need to be asking. Is there a, a directory to get people started? No, I don't think there is at the moment. Um, it's just a case of doing a Google search and, and maybe asking your, um, you know, your, your online communities or or any communities really for any recommendations. Denise says, when does this take effect? Okay, if you missed my last training, this takes effect right now. We do not get a grace period for appointing representatives. Okay, the grace period is for um, data transfers between the, e the UK and the EU. Well, actually the other way, EU and the UK. That's the grace period. We don't have to put additional protections in place for six months and we're hoping that adequacy will be given before the expiry of that six months. But the obligation to appoint a representative is now, okay? Uh, Sue Solomon says, on a mailing list of 6,500, if you've got five to 600 data subjects based in Ireland and Europe, would you recommend appointing a rep? Um, I personally would say that that's sufficient to trigger this, but that's my view and you'd need to look, you know, into all other circumstances of that. Um, Christopher says, I'm setting up a micro ge ge genealogy business, which will not be specifically offering services to people in the EU, but logically there may be clients based there who want help tracing their UK ancestors. Client projects may last from a, a few days to a few months, but once completed, then there's no further contract with the client. Would this fall into occasional or regular processing in your view, Floor? It, it'll depend on the circumstances, but if, if you're dealing with the client, you know, on an ongoing basis for the duration of the engagement, I can't see how that's going to be anything other than regular processing. But um, um, you know, you, you would need to to. Um, I would say that's regular processing. Yeah. Um, Anonymous says I'm in the UK and do digital marketing for a company in Ireland. Could I be the rep for them, and they be the rep for me? Well, are you um, are you a GDPR expert, anonymous? Firstly, um, because and again, without I mean, and even you know, you no, know, with the greatest of respect, though, but like, it, I would be careful to assume that liability on behalf yeah. of anybody else. To be Absolutely. frank, absolutely. Um, I mean, this is why I've decided not to offer representative services myself because there is a big liability issue. Yeah. Reps can be personally liable for this, yeah. um, so you know, it's not something to be undertaken lightly. Um, and, and as we said earlier, you know, trying to get your mate, in, mate John in Spain to be a rep for you just isn't, isn't going to cut the mustard. So, um, so no, anonymous, um, I would say that's not a great idea. Natalie says, what's the best email address to contact Floor on for pricing on companies with turnover below 250k? The best email, I'll put it in the chat, it's info at eubusinesspartners.com. Thanks, Floor. Um, Ibi says, I want to be compliant, but I'm a weenie business, what to do? Um, well, we've given you some options, Ibi. Um, number one, you know, if you, if you have got minimal sales in Europe, then don't market, don't target, um, don't take any orders from people in the EU, block off that, um, uh, you know, that customer base. Um, and then you don't have to um, comply with this. Um, but if you do, and you want that that income from the EU, then unfortunately, this is a cost of doing business um, and being, you know, you've got to be compliant with their laws. Nicholas says, I've no customers in Ireland, but my cosmetic responsible person will be based, will be an Ireland based company. Can I then use floors services? Uh, no, you've got to so say it's data subjects. You've got to have the data subjects in Ireland. So they don't necessarily need to be customers and um, they could be prospects on your list. Um, or um, yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's probably the only the two main um, two main types of people that are going to be relevant here. Um, so yes, if you've got prospects um, in in the Republic of Ireland, then you can use um, floor services. Um, Adam says we're a micro business of two Hungarian nationals selling digital courses in Hungarian, ninety five percent in Hungary, five percent in other EU, EU states, way under the two fifty thousand threshold. Just to be clear. The 250 threshold that we've talked about is just Floor's pricing structure, and that's 
it's the overall turnover of the entire business, not just the EU part of it. Okay, just to be clear on that. Hungary is very bad at GDPR uptake. Most GDPR legal services there are sham or incompetent. Oh dear, sorry to hear that. That's why I'm in the SBLA. Glad to be helping. Um, we currently communicate directly to all of our customers because of the language barrier. How do we even start vetting who will be a good representative or can we somehow still use flaws services? Well, so like we've said, if you have any um, data subjects in, I in the Republic of Ireland, then you can use floor, okay? So you, you might want to get some data subjects in Ireland, you know, if there is a way to do that, um, give them a f some kind of freebie or something and get some data subjects in Ireland, then, you know, that might be an option. Um, Andrew says, can you clarify how many data subjects would be needed for Northern Ireland to qualify as a territory for the representative? What if you have more in Germany, but the numbers are roughly the same? Okay, so same point. Um, you just have to have some data subjects in the Republic of Ireland. Exactly, and, and of course, if uh, subjects in Northern Ireland will be in the UK, so so they, that would be outside the. Well, it's Northern Ireland is complicated. Oh, I see. Yes, I missed the yeah Northern Ireland. Yeah, so so we're talking about the Republic of Ireland. Okay, you've got data subjects in Northern Ireland. That doesn't count here. Okay, Northern Ireland is part of the UK, um, and we're talking here about an EU establishment, an EU representative, and of course, the Republic of Ireland is still in the EU. Okay. Kathy says, is your company also in the UK for those of us in the EU, but with UK data? So Floor doesn't offer UK representatives. No, services. I do. We do. We, we, oh, we do? have a separate establishment yeah, oh, okay. in, in, in London. Oh, okay. um, UK, UK GDPR representatives limited, and um, we can take care of uh, representation there also. Okay. Awesome. I didn't know that, Floor. That's, that should, we should have started off with that. I'm glad that mm -hmm. question came up. If somebody had asked me that, I might not have necessarily known that. Um, I mean, after after this webinar. So Julie says, um, okay, so that's just a personal comment there. Okay, so these are questions about the, the pricing, which we've already dealt with. Can you be the representative yourself as the owner? So, okay, back to basics here. Um, if you've not got, if you've got data subjects in the EU, um, and if you've not got an establishment in the EU, then the purpose of the representative is to act as um, the liaison between the data subjects and, um, uh, you know, with, with, between you and the data subjects and between you and the, um, the regulatory authorities. So if you are already established in the EU, you don't need the representative, okay? So I think that's maybe where your question's coming from. Um, Anonymous says, how does the function of representative relate to that of data protection officer? Do you want to take that floor? Yeah, that's a really good question, actually, because um, the European Data Protection Board has, has issued guidance specifically on this and has said that that the, the, the representative and the DPO cannot be the same um, person or the same individual because the, 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 they see an inherent conflict of interest between the two roles. So um, if, if you have a DPO based in the EU you, you, uh, you, you would, and you need a representative, you would need to appoint a separate representative. Great. Um, Maria Laura sa says, do I need a representative if I only buy materials from the EU? So again, back to this point of you need to look at, um, you know, it, have you got EU data subjects um, and um, have you got a, a, an establishment in the EU? If not, if the answer to one is yes and the answer to two is no, then you need the representative. OK. Um, Shelley says, I'm a small business. I sell my work online via my Etsy store and my website. Most of my orders are for the UK, had a few sales to the EU, um, blah, blah, blah. Will I need a representative to process the occasional order? Okay, I think we've dealt with that issue. Uh, Maria says, how long do we, sorry, Maria Laura says, how long do we have to find a rep? Well, this obligation is, is, is current now. So legally, if you need a representative, you should have one in place now. Okay, now obviously we do not have a vast data protection police force that is going to go around checking this and finding you tomorrow if you don't do it. Your risk is that um, your data subjects will check you, your privacy notice and see that your, uh, you know, your representative details aren't there. Um, competitors, and I'm sure we'll see this more, competitors will be reporting you. Like I mentioned earlier, the, um, the extortion letters will start when people you know, click onto this. Etc. So those are your risks, or, or you can just get an audit from the regulatory authorities, and, and and they'll find out that way. So, so it's not an immediate thing. It's really about you know how long is that that window of of um, 
Yeah, and yeah. I, I suppose the, the, and the most significant thing about it though is this is one of the few external things that will be very clearly visible to. I mean, because one there was one question in the chat. There was it, how would we de if we go ahead? How would we demonstrate to customers that we are compliant and make us stand out against competitors? I mean, the first thing is you would be clearly demonstrating on your your your, your publicly displayed privacy notice that you have. Um, the representative, and it's something that then you can shout from the rooftops. This is what you do. You take you take the GDPR of your your customers uh, and and clients uh, very seriously, and so on. Exactly, make it a competitive advantage. Um, Ruby says, so is there anything we need to do on the tax side? We're not talking about tax. That's a, a question for a different webinar with different people. Um, <laughs> Richard, what counts with as processing? Our data is held by a third party platform. So the definition of processing is really very wide. Pretty much anything you do with that data is processing. So that's, you know, there's, there's no sort of, um, in terms of what we're talking about here as to whether you appoint a representative, um, you're unlikely to find any kind of exemption through any kind of you know, what's processing and what's not question. Um, Anonymous says, still no real definition of large scale. No. Uh, David, I'm an independent author based in the UK with a mailing list on MailerLite. I don't sell directly to my mailing list. Instead, I link to Amazon, Kobo or other ebook vendors. As I'm not directly selling to people in the EU, does this apply to me? Um, so it doesn't really matter if you're selling directly or not. If it's all about the processing of personal data of people within the EU, and if you are the data controller, and you are instructing your processors to process that data on your behalf, um, then this applies to you. So, um, so yes, if you have customers um, uh, and a mailing list of people in the EU, um, then then this is all relevant. Kathy says, if a UK company uses a VA virtual assistant who is based in the EU, would this qualify as the UK company having an establishment in the EU? I suspect not. I suspect that would not satisfy the, um, the, the real and, and effective um, arrangement and the stable, uh, stable part of it. Um, certainly if it's a freelance VA, um, something like that. No, I, I, I don't think it's, it's, it's going to be good enough. Yeah. Um, Julie says, Floor, can you do a service where you just sign up to our newsletter? <laughs> I'm an EU so based data one, subject. One, I'm available. One data subject from the I'm available. EU. <laughs> I can be on anybody's list. <laughs> there you go, a new revenue stream for you, Floor, a tenner a time. <laughs> Brilliant. Good question, Julie. Um, Anonymous says, can you get a mate in Ireland to sign up to your mailing list and therefore process their data? Uh, yep, you can. Anonymous says, uh, yeah, that's a follow on question. Yeah, say more questions about that. Yeah. Ruby says, is there anything we need to do when working with third party suppliers? Very, very general question, Ruby. There's lots of things you need to do when you're working with processors. Um, uh, please do read the relevant chapter in my book on that. Um, Michael says, for the avoidance of doubt due to Brexit, you need a rep in the UK and the EU if you sell to both and don't have a physical presence in either geographical location, correct? Yes, correct. Michael, correct. Yes. And Floor has services for both the EU and the UK. Yes, yes. correct. Andrew says, is the requirement for appointing a rep in an EU country that a significant or majority data subjects are in that country or is only some sufficient? We've covered that a lot. And the answer is only some need to be there. But obviously, if you've got 99% of your data subjects in one jurisdiction, it makes sense to have it in that, um, that territory. Uh, Richard says, is the 250,000 threshold for pricing in Europe's, um, sorry, in Euros floor? Yes. Yes. Yeah, Euros. Um, and been a lot of discussion amongst small beauty brands selling to private customers in the EU. Some are saying only when we sell to stockists that we need a European rep. Is this correct? I inquired about an EU rep and it would run into the thousands. So many small businesses can't afford now, it. Just there are different representatives in different that are not GDPR representatives. And I because I've come across that. So we've been contacted by people sometimes who, in, in certain product categories. And I'm to be honest, I'm not familiar with, with, with what they are, but just clarify it may not be a GDPR representative they're referring to in that context. Yeah. And again, you know, it, it doesn't really matter if you're um you know, how you're selling, it's really about, you know, the, the processing of the data and whether the data subjects are in the EU. That's the main question. 
Um, Anonymous says, a uh, beauty skincare sector, we require a responsible person to hold all of our product information on file and register our products on the EU portal. Shall, will there be any discussion on this rather than the representative? No, this is purely about um, the obligations under the GDPR to appoint a representative. Helen says, presumably, if I decide we don't need a rep, as we have establishments all over the EU, it would be the job of the legal team or DPO of the establishment in the relevant territory to deal with any issue with the local regulator on our behalf. Absolutely. Yes, correct, Helen. Rob says, um, there are unique regulations for trade between Northern Ireland and Aro and the Republic of Ireland. Does this extend to offices in Northern Ireland providing services to the Republic of Ireland um, would, would not need a representative? That's an honours question, Rob. <laughs> I, um, the, the, the situation between the, the, the North and I, I, ultimately, if you don't have an establishment in the EU, I, I still think that the, the GDP representation is, is, is may well catch you, even though the, the, the all island arrangement um, for, uh, for Northern Ireland is, you know, it, it, it's quite unique. I would take specific legal advice in, the, in, in Northern Ireland in relation to that. Okay, awesome. And I think, Floor, we've got to the end of the questions after that marathon Q&A session. Um, so I think that's it. And oh, someone's just snuck one in. Oh, no, that's that's Robbus again. Ah, oh, well, I, I, yeah, I think maybe more are coming in and going to the top. So in that case, my apologies. Um, okay, I think I've dealt with them all. If I haven't, then do feel free to pick it up in the, my GDPR Facebook group and ask questions in there. Um, but I think um, we will call it a day here, and I hope that has been enormously helpful for you. I'm sure it has, from, certainly from the feedback in the chat floor, people have found that tremendously helpful. Hey, so well, that, well, massive thanks to you, Floor, for coming on. Thank and, you so um, much. And thank clarifying. you Suzanne, for, for hosting. Really appreciate that. Thank you to your wonderful audience and community here. Really appreciate that. Really glad to have been on help. Happy to come back and help uh, at any stage that we can do this for you. And um, just uh, great, great to see you all, guys. Fantastic. And guys, you know, I'm sure there are lots of people in the small business community who are as one of, I can't remember who it was, but said earlier, you know, she's just been running around in circles trying to get straight answers on this. And this webinar has been so useful for that. So do share this new knowledge um, with your business communities. If you see a discussion on this or whatever, then chip in and, and you know, direct them um, our way. Um, but also, you know, do feel free to recommend floor services to people that you know need his services. Um, I'm sure that, you know, I've done a bit of research and from what I've seen, Floor is, you know, with that entry level um, turnover point, by far one of the most affordable options. And he really knows his stuff. Like I say, you have to do your due diligence. Um, you know, if you go into France, Germany, wherever, and you need a rep there, really make sure that they know, know their GDPR, they know their law, they're reputable. They've been around, look at how long they've been established. You know, if they only set up last year, I would not be touching them with a barge pole, you know? Um, if, they're, you know if they're a lawyer or part of a law firm, then fantastic. Um, but, you know, really do your homework and um, make sure that they are a reputable outfit. And as I say, from my research, the, the prices have been a lot, lot more than what Floor's offering. So I'm so pleased, Floor, that you've put in that that sort of um, smaller threshold for the smaller clients. We want to help people take care of it and, and, and get compliant and just not have not have the hassle, essentially. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thanks. Thanks for doing that, Floor. Awesome. So um, thanks for being here, guys. Thank you for being such a wonderfully engaged audience. Thank you for all of your brilliant comments and your questions. And have a brilliant um, Friday. Whatever you're doing, I'm off for a walk in the sunshine now, Floor. What are you up to? Do you know, you've just given me a great idea, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> the sun is streaming in here too. So so I'll stay within 5K and go for, go for a nice little walk. Fantastic. Well, enjoy enjoy your rest of today. Enjoy your weekend. You and I'll have a wonderful weekend, you. Suzanne. Thank yeah. you so much for the opportunity. Really, really appreciate it talking to everybody here today. It's been brilliant to have you, Floor. And thank you to you all. I will see you on one of my next training sessions or in the uh, GDPR Facebook group. So take care, everybody, <laughs> and uh, see you soon.